My name is Danielle. My name is Velvet Lamb. My husband's name was Mike. My name is Hope Law. Uh, my name is Shannon Fritch. Lori Hawk. George German. Sarah Vierzen. Shannon. Sherry Usselman. So my name is Kay Foriach. I'm from Livermore, California, which is Northern California, about an hour and a half east of San Francisco. I was diagnosed officially December 21st, 2014. He was officially diagnosed in April of 2020. July 18th of 2016. Last year in October. The fall of 2021. I was diagnosed with ACC in December of 2015. I was diagnosed at stage four. Stage two at the time. Um, and I was stage two. They staged me at three. And I was stage two. Um, I am now stage four though. I'm stage four. I noticed that I had this pimple, like right on my like jawline. I thought, huh, this is so strange. Well, first I just didn't feel like myself and say, oh, today I had a nosebleed. Well, that's weird. Or today I'm dizzy. Or today my blood pressure's up. Or today my ankles are swelling. Or they have been for three years. My hairline was slowly receding. And I did know or notice that I was getting all these chin hairs, you know, be taking them out. And then uh, my voice was slowly deepening just hot flashes like so intense unexplained high blood pressure my daughter and i um were at outback having lunch he said dad you don't look good i said that's normal for me one day i had some abdominal pain and i was going to head out for the day and my daughter who was 15 at the time had this just real strong feeling that i need to go in but i did not my uh, menstrual cycle came on the 4th and then again on the 10th. The moon phase, um, extremely high blood pressure, the anxiety. Um, I had joint pain really bad. I had knee pain, swelling. Um, I, at the time, had more testosterone than even my husband. And he continued to have edema in his leg. And so, um, I was struggling losing weight. They're getting body hair, and maybe I was putting on a bit of weight, but you never know because I was going through the menopause. <laughs> Sorry. Right. But I was 49 when I was diagnosed, almost 50, so I just thought, oh, I'm going through menopause. I mean, I am about to turn 39 in four days. You know, maybe, maybe this is perimenopause, right? And she looked at me and said, you're going through menopause. You're going through menopause before I am. It was a bad timing also in my age. And so I equated a few things possibly to uh, pre-menopause. So to try to be of a community that is, is trying to dive in and know more. But I do believe that it's important to see an expert because it's so rare. Um, and, you know, there's not a ton of research that's been done. You know, we're, it's not one of those cancers where everybody's researching and there's a lot of funding. We have this ultra rare disease. And at the end of the day, with this type of cancer, you need a specialist. We need specialists yeah. that specialize in adrenal cancer specifically. And I have seen probably three or four oncologists through this. And I remember one said, there's nothing I can do for you. I have not seen an adrenal cancer patient in 18 years. All I can do for you is support you mentally, emotionally. He said, but I can't treat you. I don't know what to do with you. You're an anomaly. Wow. And I thought, okay, well, I better go find somebody who can. I don't think there's any other options because it's so rare. I talked to Dr. Hernandez when we were at NIH for my surgery and I said you know he had this needle biopsy and I've been beating myself up about it and he said well you have to go from where you are. I've been told three times no surgery and then when I got with Dr. Foho he said let's put that thing in a jar which I that's my my favorite saying. I feel like you could be losing 
time in your life by not getting the correct help. The experts understand and the experts treat you like you matter and like you have a voice and they just know, they just know. And I'm sure not all local oncologists are this way, but Mike's local oncologist was, I don't want to say dismissive, um, but very clinical, very cold, very dispassionate, very, this is what we need to do. I got answers like, oh, you need to lose weight or you need to exercise or you need to, you know, increase your vitamin intake, sleep more, but nothing, nobody really dug very far. Because I had been assured and over and over that it's not cancer. You misdiagnosed me multiple times. I had multiple visits with him. I saw my, my family practitioner probably 20 times last year. <laughs> Um, they kept sending me away, telling me that everything was fine. I was so dumbfounded when I heard the word mass. I didn't do enough research. There. And I said to the surgeon, why did you do that? He says, well, well, he says, well, I only saw one other case of this uh, 15 or 20 years ago in medical school. So I said, um, well, if you do a Google search, the very thing, first thing it says is do not biopsy. They never found it. And by that time, it had to have been huge. He ha ended up having a needle biopsy, which obviously is not indicated in ACC cases. But we didn't know that it was ACC, and I didn't know enough to ask. I also needed a local oncologist for the radiation and if I needed IV chemo. Being a nurse, I found um, the best of the best, and he was near retirement. He's now retired, but he is so good, and he's seen so many cancer patients and never one had, never once had an adrenal patient. Every time another ACC patient has a scan done, that scan is then taken to the tumor board. This is getting it out there. Other people oh, yeah. are learning about this, you know, and other, other doctors that do not treat ACC are going to get to become aware of what this disease is like. Loaded. I wish I knew right away to see an expert because um, while my surgeon was great, he at the time was not an expert. I don't know if he would be considered one now. Um, and I remember leading up to surgery, he wanted to do it laparoscopically. Um, I did not realize that my tumor, which was hormone producing, would knock out the ability of the, my other adrenal gland to function. And because of that, no one really understands the importance of adrenal glands. But that's one thing I wish I knew is, is, is that, that just be persistent. If you don't get the answer you want, go someplace else. Just be a great advocate for yourself. And I wish that I had known then to look for other patients. Um, I wish there was somebody to walk me through even the emotional end if you don't have the hope, then you might as well not even have treatment. And I wish I knew just to take a deep breath <laughs> um, and look at all my options before I just jumped. You can fight this and you can beat it. I wish that we had had more conversations, more hard conversations. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. I know nobody wants to think about it, but he told me about two and a half weeks before he died what he wanted done with his ashes. As strange as it sounds, it was really valuable to know what he wanted and to be able to give that to him. I wish I knew honestly how aggressive this cancer is. And I wish I had more people to talk to. That I would have like understood that life's not promised for one um and like we don't all we're not all guaranteed forever um and um i mean i don't know from a medical standpoint what i could have done more you know but i just you know i think a, i read something online that said it was like a post or something and 
it was basically saying like we're, we all live as though like we're guaranteed 90 years like the government owes us 90 years or something it's a birthright <laughs> and right. we're not. so for me that's just I, I wish that I would have like taken every moment in, in, in time it, it's, you know slower because <laughs> I miss the old life that I had the life before this and it's a new way of life right it yeah. is and I promise, I promise you will get there and you're so early in your diagnosis, but you are going to move through your, this is an early stage of grief and it is loss. You've, you're experiencing loss right now. Mm -hmm. So all of this is totally normal and know that we are here for you. We are your cheerleaders. We are your advocates. We will always be here to hold your hand. Um, you need to vent. You need to cry. Call us. You know, since I've been diagnosed, I live my life completely different. And it's because of the people I met in my support group. Right. Everything I know is from my fellow patients. Everything. Um, I'm so thankful everybody in, in the ACC community does. There's so much wonderful things that we have been able to bring forth. A new friend of mine, her mom was recently diagnosed. And I remember she texted me and she said, what do we do? And I said, hold on, I'll get right back to you. We in the ACC community said, here's the physicians, contact this person, do this, do now, do not wait. Right here, 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 and here. It was able to provide them so much information, so many more choices than I feel like I had. Um, my relationship with the support groups, um, in the beginning, I was obsessed with them, checking them constantly, reading back as far as I could just to get as much information as I could. But I realized quickly that was completely unhealthy. Um, because I was obsessed. Um, since then, I have like a love-hate relationship with them. Um, I love getting on there and helping people because I've gained so much knowledge in the last six, seven years um, that I didn't have when I was first diagnosed. And I love being able to share that knowledge and help other people and encourage them to find better doctors and do the things they need to do in order to get the best care. Um, but then on the downside, there's so much negativity and then there's so many deaths and it's, it messes with your head and you, I, I need to step away sometimes and take a break. And I had already asked for um, approval to get into this Facebook group and I'm like, Dad, I wish you were still alive so you could help me figure this out. I don't know what to do and I'm just sitting there crying and, and then the next day, I get the welcome to the group and everybody's welcoming me on. And then this one guy says, welcome. How do you know so-and-so? And he named my brother. I'm like, uh, that's my brother. How do you know him? And he said, well, I don't know him, but I knew Bernie, who was my dad. Just surround yourself with the community too. Like I could never have even found Dr. Hammer or got to where I was if I had not found like the Facebook group. And, and a couple People have said to me, you know, you, you don't have to stay here. And I understand that, but it, if I can help somebody else, then that makes a little bit of, it makes a little bit of a difference. It makes it better. The support group, I don't know how I would even be functioning without it. <laughs> Um, so I'm so grateful for this group um, and it really I'm not just saying and I, I truly believe like I would be lost without it because you know you only get you know an hour with the doctor you know and then you can call them if you have a question but like the emotional part or hey did you you know even just reading people's stories for me is like really it gives me hope you know and it makes me feel like there's I have a fighting chance it was a, it, it's a great resource because mm. you get to meet so many people that have been where you are, have been. The doctor who told me was in a hurry because it was Christmas, it was December 23rd. And uh, I said, I don't know what that means. And he said, it means you have about 90 days to get your affairs in order. And he walked out of the room. Um, that was eight years ago. You know, I've gotten to be in this journey a year and a few months later with, you know, no chemo, no radiation. So I'm a different story already and we all are gonna have a different journey through this.
I may have ACT, but ACT doesn't have me. I've got to live. I'm going to live. And if you hear the word no, don't stop. That yeah. we're not just some people to be swept under the rug. It's, you think about it. I was diagnosed October of 2012. Um, I've had my 10 year anniversary and, there, and there's, there's not a whole lot of people who can say that. I'm not going to be a statistic. I had so many amazing nurses and surgeons, and I think about all of the people that it took to get me here, and it's it's overwhelming. There were so many amazing people. Thank <sighs> Professor Shkembri was mayor, Dr. Pierre, my friend, um, Adrian Vella, V-E-L-L-A, at Mayo. Um, uh, I think even now Desiree, because she's... Uh, she is being very thorough. Um, Professor Alt, A -A Alt, A R L T, difficult to pronounce, <laughs> and her team. Uh, well, my mother's name is Ginger Usselman. Um, you know, true thank you for being uh, there for every step of this journey and just supportive. Um, the prayer team at my CCV church, both. Uh, um, are all individuals involved with that group and those that prayed with me in the days up and coming to the surgery. So very thankful for Dr. Narula. I want to give the biggest thanks in the world to Dr. Foho and Dr. Delavero. Um, I love you both so much. Um, I would not be here without the two of you, nor would I be able to live the life that I live without the two of you. Definitely my biggest thank you to Dr. Edwards, who's my friend that that diagnosed it right away. Because I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him saying, you don't need a biopsy. Um, to thank, you know, Dr. Hammer for meeting me and his whole team. They were they were fabulous. Thank Dr. Foho for for meeting with me over the phone and um, giving me the the answer to what was in my gut, but I didn't know what that was. Jeannie Snyder was the person that first led me in, through everything and walked me through everything. And then I'm gonna get emotional, but my dear Tina, um, she was diagnosed a month after me and she's had an extremely hard journey too. And um, we have walked this journey side by side and through COVID and um, but Tina Rubin is just become one of my best friends. Um, and then Dr. Hammer, of course, because he's right. just been miraculous. I'd like to thank Dr. Del Riviera, um, Dr. Mary Beth Hughes, Dr. Foho, and last but certainly not least, Dr. Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez's research nurse, Kathleen, is, um, has been wonderful. She was a tremendous support through Mike's illness and, you know, leading up to his, to his death. Yeah. I, I, I hope that they know how I feel about them. Friends that have, have fought the battle and lost. So they're the ones that are the true heroes. So they took you know, the chemos that have made it better for you guys. The doctors that spend all their time doing the research. Um, and then, you know, our family and friends. I have a, a family in Maryland that takes care of me when I come out there. So their name's Carol and Frank and um, their stepmom Marie. So I wanna thank my mom, she's my rock. Um, my stepmom, who literally slept in the bed with me for weeks, and I, I mean, I was like, I went back to baby mode, and she was there, and she's still there for me and my dad. I love them, and I really couldn't do this without them. You know, I mean, I can make a lot more money doing other things than doing it. Sure. Let me put it that way. And, sure. and they dedicate their life to this, which I find admirable. Um, um, and it's, it's uh, you know, and I, and I appreciate it very much. I really do. I appreciate every single member that is on our group. You know, 
if I did not have that outlet of people that get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally different. It would be such a different experience. Thank everybody who stood by me, who encouraged me, who was just such an amazing part of my care team. My husband, Eric, my sons, Alex and Tyler, my mom, Grace, my dad, Mel, my cousins, my cousins, my friends, my friend who said, you have to go to the different doctor because you need some help. Thank you, Diana, for helping to save my life. Diana and Linda for going to the oncologist with me because it seems so surreal to my aunts, to my uncles, to my family, my kids, to my physicians who listened to me, to mm-hmm. my coworkers who picked me up and drove me to work. There's so many things and so many people to think and not one of them is less or more important than the other and all of them I cherish. And I'm so eternally grateful. Thank you so very, very much. 